for we are not a muse. Like a cat I left behind for just a few days, some neighbor feeding it while I was gone, the muse avoids me, tail twitching if I draw near, no brilliant inspiration in its turned away scowl. But it was family, I say, and lovers and potboiler jobs. There was rent to pay, places to go, I tell her. She is silent, will not meet my eyes. But she shows me a photo album of those who loved her well. Everyone knows their names. No one, she assures me, will ever know mine. But I only want her love, I say. And so she arches her back and fades into dark room shadows. Will a bouquet of soft or sultry expletives or a newly created floral species do the trick? I don't get too close for fear of muse scratch fever, that familiar malady that keeps me babbling like this, unloved by goddess and unread by the casual reader. Um, this, uh, this contains a quote from Peter Benchley's Jaws, I'll just tell you that ahead of time. It's called The Eyes of the Shadows of Hiroshima. The shadows have no eyes to see the horror in the eyes of the century of spectators to come. Can't see with their no eyes the pitying expressions in a million other eyes, or hear with their no ears the clucked tongues, like bomb bay door hatches clicking open, the womb of a functionary pilot's mother birthing, ejecting, releasing on an unsuspecting world that one comic name Apotheosis of madness, the Oppenheimer Declaration on its lipless steel face, I am become death. Ghost shadows of final furtive movements captured on stone walls, human molecular images burnt in one million ASA on concrete film. With their mouths op wide open with final wonder, we don't know just as we don't know about their eyes. Sailors on the USS Indianapolis saw eyes. Men who had dumbly transported to the mothership of global chaos, the little big bomb of annihilation, they saw eyes sunk on their return to base by Japanese torpedoes, great steel cyclopean seekers that rammed their hull with fire and melted metal and opened the skin of their safety, filled the bulkheads with seawater, set each gob of meat adrift in a shark-filled Pacific, bobbing like whore's breasts and attracting sharp teeth of desire, eyes, hundreds, thousands of eyes lifeless eyes, black eyes, like a doll's eye. When he comes at you, doesn't seem to be living until he bites you and those black eyes roll over white. Screaming to each other and to no one, they went limbless into the great wet void below, limbless and assless and headless, no gonads left to defend without eyes the sea fodder that drifted down into the great vastness it could not see. Of the 1,100 on board treading water with whole limbs, 800 per perished, had no more eyes, nothing more to see. The one bloodied eye of Earth's two watery blue sisters looked out at a whirling and soulless universe and took no warmth from the light of dead stars, so it opened its jaws even as it blinked in pain. A handful of sailors on the Indianapolis, compared to the urban generation of the rising sun, degenerated into the whirling eyes of atoms. There were no eyes. When the sharks were gone, there were no eyes in the sea melted eyes of a thousand crying cranes. There were no eyes. <laughs>